first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, you back once again with Dr. Alain Bay. And uh, what we're going to be going over tonight is basically strange occurrences and psychic phenomena. Um, we're going to bring everybody on to the line. For those in the chat, those who want to contribute to tonight's discussion, please call in at 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Hopefully everyone out here can um, hear, um, hear me. And what we're going to be going into, like we said, the strange occurrences and psychic phenomena. We're getting ready to bring our co-host on. That's Brother Grand Sheik R.L. You hear, Brother? Yes, sir. Brother Greetings. Uh, 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 peace and love, God. Peace and love, God. How are you doing today? Well, very well. How's, how's, how's God doing? Everybody doing well. Doing well. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, well, what we're going to get into is um, strange occurrences and psychic phenomena. And uh, we can't say that enough. And, um, like, for example... Um, I was around five years old. Well, actually, we can go back to when I was four. Um, on the first day, I was being taken to nursery school, I guess, or preschool, or whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, as my mom and I was walking down the street, we were living in Oklahoma Street near Broadway in Brooklyn at the time. Um, I was able to feel the racism and the sexism in which that was in the environment. Right. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even explain it at that time, not at that early age, but as I grew older, I remember the feeling. And I come to the realization that's what I was feeling, was all the negativity um, in the world. And it actually started making me cry, you know, as a child of four. Mm-hmm, and exactly. my mom couldn't realize why, you know, why I was crying. Not only did I not want to be separated from her, you know, at four, you know what I'm saying, going to um, preschool, but, you know, the fact that I was feeling all these negative energies um, also made me, you know, uh, fearful of, mm-hmm. you know, what was, you know, um, could take place in the world, you know. And um, I know if I was feeling that as a child, I know there's others in which that felt that same thing. 
you right. know, um, probably just could not explain it or did never go back to those experiences as they was um, as they grew older, in order to try to figure out what it was that they was actually feeling. Um, at five, um, I was able to tap into other dimensions, see other beings, um, in particular what we refer to as ghosts. But I wouldn't even call it ghosts because most of the time when people say ghosts or when you see it on TV, those are actually um, astral remnants. In other words, um, this astral energy in which that was left behind or imprints of astral energy that was left behind after a person um, going through a dramatic experience. And so that astral energy relived that event over and over again. So those are actually nothing more than memories. That's what they refer to as most ghosts. What I'm talking about is, as an actual ghost is a being from another plane. Um, you know, in other words, a higher mentioned in this one, mm-hmm. in which that as um, and as the world or as these particular planes merge, you're actually able to see. It's just like turning the TV. Um, back in the days, um, the TVs used to go off around two o'clock in the morning. Of course, they don't do that now, but back in the days they did. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you know those who are older might remember that. Um, this is probably before the remote control. Oh yeah, I remember. Right, right. right. So as the TV was going off, you were, um, you know, um, you know, they would pair you, and you know, and then next thing you know, it would be the sound of, and the picture that you would see is a lot of pixels of black and white. Well, the being that I seen at five was in the image of this black and white, just like you turn on the TV or if the TV was going off at two a.m. in the morning, and it was pitch black, so I knew what I was seeing had to be real because there was no light emanating from anywhere, you know. And as this being was coming from out of the kitchen um, um, area, I'm um, towards the living room and towards my bedroom. I was looking at it as it was making the trend, you know, make, as it was moving forward. And I was like, you know, in my mind, I knew it wasn't a, a man per se, you know, not like, you know, I've seen on earth, you know. But it wasn't a man shape, you know, but it was still in the image of this, you know, uh, frequency. It didn't make that noise, of course, but it was still in this um, image of this black and white pictures, you know, that was um, in and out, you know, making up a, what looks like a human body. And as he looked towards me and I looked and I was looking at it, I was saying in my mind, you know, I'm going to freak out if, you know, he looked towards me and he did. And at that time, you know, I screamed for my father and my mom. My dad comes running in the room and he's like, oh, you just had a bad dream, blah, blah, blah. But no, nah, it was more than a dream. You know, because number one, I wasn't sleeping. You know, my eyes were wide open. Uh-huh. Um, I was very attentive because I was playing, you know, I'm, you know, I'm five years old. I'm playing with my toes and looking out the window at the stars and, you know, just, just everything I could because I didn't want to go to sleep at 9 o'clock. So I was still up, I was still, you know, active, you know. And so when I seen that, you know, I knew there was some things on planet Earth in which that, you know, definitely was not being explainable, you know, by, you know, by the average person who didn't want to talk about it. You know, and then by nine, um, a UFO hovered over the top of my head about maybe a, a football field for about 100 yards or more over the top of my head. Um, about 150 yards, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but it was less than 200 yards. Um, it was fairly close that I was able to see um, the shape of the ship clearly, as well as the lights going in and out around it in the pattern of the chocolate. Um, so Roy G. Bill, red, um, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And these colors were going around the ship in that pattern. Um I was walking from the store. That this time I was living in Coney Island in Brooklyn, and I was walking back, and I seen this. You know, I was like, oh, you know, in my mind, you know, oh, snap, you know. Uh-huh. But I didn't really say too much of anything. And at the time, um, I remember the um, the Time Life magazine books was on TV, and they was advertising these books like crazy: The Lost Continent of Blue, The Lost Continent of Atlantis. You know, all these different books and, you know, psychic phenomena and all these things. And so um, after I saw that, I um, went upstairs 
um, you know, I told my mom that I want the Tom Rice Magazine book series. And she ordered them for me, you know, um, you know, during that time. And I, as a matter of fact, I still got a couple of them to the very day. You know, so, you know, this, this is just some of the things in which that took place in which that caused me at an early age to know that there was more going on on planet Earth than what um, the average person wanted to talk about. Of course, I didn't talk about these things at the time. I didn't even tell my um, mom because of the event, you know, happened when I was five, when they thought, you know, I was just, you know, so I just had a bad dream or something. I know what I've seen as well, you know, and um, it was no dream because I had my eyes wide open, like I said. So I knew the things I couldn't talk to um, my parents about and other people about, so I had to keep it internally until I got to around the age of 19. And I came in, um, you know, I was already studying um, various information like Minister Farrakhan and Nation of Gods and Earth. Um, right. And Alpha Max at the age of 12. I was studying the autobiography of Malcolm X at 12. That, that took me into by the age of 14, the Nation of Gods and Earth. By 15, Minister Farrakhan. And by 19, came the course on Dr. York's information. In my meet as he was known at that time. And of course, you know, um, studying the Nation of Islam. You know, uh, various information like from Malcolm, um, in which that he got from Elijah Muhammad, only Elijah Muhammad, about the UFOs or the motherships and so forth and so on. So here we were, I finally found people who was talking about it. When I got into Dr. York's information, um, his community was also talking about it. So it was something in which that, you know, other people seen more than just myself. And so before I knew that, you know, I wasn't tripping. And that, you know, that this was actually real, that there was something definitely going on on planet Earth. And mm-hmm. then, of course, the question becomes, who's who on planet Earth? You know, and so um, all these things took place. And, you know, so, you know, that, that probably what sparked me in order to, you know, go as hard as I have, you know, in this conscious movement, you know, in order to reveal what was going on or what is going on um, on planet Earth. So... You know, that's that's some of my story right here, brother um, L. Um, you have any strange occurrences or psychic phenomena that took place or that might have caused you or um, jump start you or leap you into this new consciousness? Yeah. Is there, brother? Yes, we're here. Can you hear me? Oh, I didn't hear, I didn't hear uh, the last yes. sentence. What you yeah, I was saying, um, um, did you have any information in which that um, you can tell the people about in which that jump-started your consciousness into this information? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I noticed uh, a lot of times uh, when I was also uh, a young child, uh, I would watch a lot of movies. Uh, movies like, uh, say for instance, like uh, science fiction movies. And, uh, you know, I had a dream. No, it wasn't a dream because I was wide awake, you know, and I saw a shadow of a man right. real dark. The image was real, very dark. Right. Then right. I saw so hollering. Are, right, those are shadow beings, right. Right, I saw hollering screaming, but everybody woke up and turned the lights on, of course, and mm-hmm. walked around. You know, they, they said, we don't see anything, you know. And... Right. uh I said, well, it was a man that no, nobody's here. You know, he walked right. all over the house and front yard, back yard. Was anybody, but was like a burglar or somebody in there. You know, they said, it been, you know, uh, no, no, there's no signs of anybody being here, you know. So uh, they were saying, well, maybe that was that, uh, that, that movie you saw last night. You know, maybe that had something to do with it. And I said, no, right. I, I, no I was wide awoke. Right. You know, I wasn't asleep, and I, I wasn't even sleepy. So, uh, as years passed by, and I talked to different brothers, you know, uh, I think I think I was I think I was also in the Nation of Islam at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, some of the brothers were saying, "No, no, you was experiencing something at right. the time that you didn't understand," right? And that's what you know caused you to react that way. Right. Well, I can tell you this, brothers, that from the dark shadow being. Um, those are called um, shadow beings, you know, and others refer to them as ghosts also. 
Uh, um, allegedly, when those are seen, um, there are certain um, events in which that um, take place, um, oftentimes not necessarily positive. You know, so uh, I know that during the 1996, during, um, during the year of the Olympics, I was living down in Atlanta. And during that time period, as I was living in Atlanta, I was working at um, LabCorp. I was doing, um, I was like a lieutenant um, security officer at the time. And I remember always around 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I would always see these shadow beings, um, you know, basically just out my peripheral, just basically walking around. And um, I came to the conclusion that the fact that LabCorp dealt so much with blood, that actually what these beings were was, um, was aspects of the life force in which that, or shades of the life force in which that is actually attached to the blood supply, you know, mm-hmm. or, um, or these beings have a tendency um, to, to want to be near blood, you know. Okay. And that's no coincidence based on the fact that there's been a lot of um, human and animal sacrifices um, as far as blood is concerned. So mm-hmm. um, I realized that that had to be some more of the connection between the shadow beings in which that um, I was seeing um, during that year, heavily, heavily during 1996. Of course, I've seen it before that and after that, but during that time period was one of the heaviest times that I mean that I was seeing them. I mean, I was seeing them left and mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I had another one. I was about I was in the nation still in the nation at the time, and I was sleeping and the moon was shining directly on me, and uh, I saw uh, or I, else I thought I saw Master Farad Muhammad, mm-hmm. and he was telling me something. He said everything is going to be all right, you know. Just keep doing what you're doing, you know, and keep your head up. Right. And uh, I talked to another brother about it, and he said, uh, well, you, what you vision was your ancestors. Right, I said, right. But I, I, I kind of disagreed with him because I said, no, it was Master for our Muhammad. Right. You know, uh, 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 he was just like he was sitting in a chair, then he rose up, then he had a little a little conversation with me. But it was like I was like in a trance, like you were like half sleep and half woke. Right. I know the feeling. I know what you're talking yeah, you know, so that's that's another experience I had. After years passed, after I found out the truth about uh, uh, Master Bar and Muhammad, I said, "Well, maybe, maybe it was so, maybe it wasn't." You know, but but it could have been still, you know, uh, a lot of truth to that. It still could have been real. Because that was, I think that was, a lot of that was my uh, what you say, my subconscious talking to me or whatever. Yes, sir. Still there? I see what you were saying there, brother um L before we got knocked off. Uh-huh. Um Master uh, Muhammad. Um what you know about what year that was? That was in ninety four. All right. Ninety four. That's deep because that's deep because um from the information I've read that Master Muhammad just passed really in nineteen ninety what um Wafi Muhammad stated. Well, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, because and so I was in the state of mind at that time, the state of mind that I had at that mm-hmm. time that he was actually uh, the God in person. Right. <laughs> that was the state of mind I, I was in until I learned right. a lot later about it, you know, how they was really working this thing, you know. And when you told me right. that... How, uh, right, how all is mine. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, you know. And uh, was it a real, uh, was he really the God in person? And uh, uh, I found out, uh, talking about brothers like you, like yourself. Right. That he actually wasn't. And, uh, well, I mean, I... His, his God in which that dwells within him is God. You okay. know, in which that moved the body, that exists in the body, in which that uh, of God, so that uh-huh. is right and exact. However, it's just not him by himself. 
it is all of us. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now I, I understand that part. Right. Right. But I had experienced that. That's some. Um, like I said, I was really, really into you know the nation and and um, um, uh, how the, uh, uh, Elijah Muhammad as being the messenger and everything. Right. But, but 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 what did you say about ninety four? You said uh, uh, Warstein Muhammad and uh, uh, Master Paul Muhammad got yeah, that well, same year. Well, well, what well what he said is that um, in the um, late seventies, around seventy eight, that Master that um, Warstein Muhammad brought Master Muhammad to um, um, over on uh, one of the mosques there in Oakland, California. He made them um, head over the mosque. Um, at that time, he was known as Abdullah Muhammad. You know, um, he was known as Master Al Muhammad, but um, you know, you have to go back and do the research on Wafi Muhammad and what he have stated about Master Al Muhammad. He said that um, he was able to pick up the phone and talk to Master Al Muhammad anytime that he wanted to. You know, and that based on the information that we've gotten, it was around that time period in which that Master Al Muhammad actually um, passed on, passed form. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering what whatever became of him, because I right. kept on wondering right. if he's still alive or right. uh, if well, he I is. Think... What do he look like? You know. Right. Right. Well, um, I have some new information. As a matter of fact, if you had your computer, brother L, you w- you would have been able to go to the website and actually see photos of Master Muhammad um, on the website www.dralemelbay.com. Um, mm-hmm. To the section of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World, you would be able to actually see various photographs as well as also um, Wafi Muhammad's statements about Masra Muhammad and you know, all of that information. It was right there. And that was, and, and the reason why I wanted to do or go back to that topic is because, um, very similarly, um, Dr. York or Imam Inti used to come into my dreams in the same, um, in the same manner. Um, so actually, Imam Inti is a dream to jump up. You know, um, as a matter of fact, I was lucid dreaming, and I knew I was dreaming, and I was teaching the class. And mm-hmm. coming through the doors is Dr. York and another shorter brother than him. You know, now Dr. York is only about five, six, but there was another brother um, with him who was even shorter than him. And, mm-hmm. you know, and he came up to the front of the class, and Dr. York tapped me on my shoulder you know, a lady's hand on my shoulder and said, you're doing a good job, you're doing mm-hmm. a great job, something like that. And wow. he turned around and walked right back out the door, you know. Okay. So, you know, it, you know, so, you know, I, I, I know what you're talking about. There's times in which that, you know, um, based on the school of thought, you know what I'm saying, that you're in, um, you know, these things can definitely occur. You know, because the mind makes everything real. Remember, the all is mind, and everything in the universe is mental. Cause I know I was uh, another experience I had when I was watching television, and uh, I fell asleep mm-hmm. real late, uh, right. early about two o'clock in the morning, and I, and I heard my mother telling me to get up, get up, turn the TV off, go to bed. Mm-hmm. You know, but my mother's still alive. You know, right? She's still alive, but it's just the idea. It's just the idea of just hearing. Just hearing her say that, you know. Right. So, right. so get up and turn the TV off, go to bed. Mm-hmm. And I like, I'm, I'm like, wow, it, it was so real, you know. It seemed like. Well, I know exactly what you're talking about. I had an experience like that when I was around 11, in which that I remember thinking about. Um, the, um, we just finished watching, you know, like the night before, or whatever. During that week, we was watching the movie Roots, and I was thinking about, you know. Um, you know, blacks being hung and so forth and so on, more being hung or whatever we want to refer to us as at any given name. And, you know, and as I was coming out of my bedroom, walking towards the living room and the kitchen, um, a voice just went off in my head and said, what if he was already here? Mm-hmm. And it was so clear until it just stopped me in my tracks. And I had to think to myself, hold up, now where the hell did that come from, you know? And come to realize that it had to be one of my DNA ancestors, you know, waking up and telling me the truth of the matter, that what if we was already here? In other words, what if we did not just come from Africa? Because that's what I was thinking at the time based on 
That's how I was raised. That's how I was taught. That's the dogma and the indoctrination that they gave me, you know, at the time, you know, that I'm 11 years old. You know, go back to Africa, nigga. You know, that was the thing in which that, you know, I was told. So, you know, mm-hmm. the fact that one of my ancestors inside of me opened up and said, what if you was already here? You know, of course, I kept that in the back of my head. I didn't know how to put the pieces of the puzzle together, but I knew it had to do with us being indigenous or, you know, being what is called Indian. You know what I'm saying? I knew it had to do with that. And, of course, um, as... I began to do more research later on. Of course, I come to the conclusion and become actually one of the um, authors of this principle that, you know, that we are here in America, you know, and actually wrote a book about it, the First World Order. So these are just phenomenal things which had occurred at 11, and then, you know, um, less than 30 years later, you know what I'm saying, I'm doing these particular things in which that I was told um, as a child, proven and you know, proving basically what what was said to me that we was already here. Now, wow. I mean, of course, you know, at eleven, I didn't know, you know, um, I didn't know any of this information, but I speculated. That was enough for me to speculate and for me to investigate. You know, and to begin to start doing study and research on Indians, on Native American ancestry, so forth uh-huh. and so on. At the age of eleven, so I remember wow. going to the library. Um, I would tell my grandma I want to go to the library, and she would take me to the library, and I would just get dozens and dozens of books and read them dozens of books within two weeks. Huh. You know, some books I actually would go through within a day, you know, reading and, you know, studying and researching. Yes, so not knowing that any of this information would take me at later on, not knowing that I would become a lecturer or that I would become a historian, a sociologist, you know, um, become a metaphysician, a reverend, pastor, whatever you want to refer to it as, a healer, never knowing any of this information, but this is where everything um, led me to based on my experiences. So this is why um, we have in the show tonight strange occurrences and mm-hmm. second phenomena because these are things in which that have actually taken place in people's lives in which that has led them along a path in which that should tell them and dictate to them their mission or purpose in life. These mm-hmm. things that was to happen to me verified my purpose and uh, mission in life. You yeah, know, to uh, become a teacher, you know, become a teacher and actually teach that we did not just come from Africa. We actually was already here. So right. this is just one premise. Mm-hmm. Right. I, 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 uh, I, but, you know, I never, I, I got to share this too, I never thought I would never be a member of the Nation of Islam. Right. Never. You know, I mean, and I wound up I was looking at myself selling the final call of newspapers in the middle of the street. Right. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, I never dreamed I'd wind up out here doing this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no bow tie suit. No, no, just, right. just suit up, you know. That's right, that's right. And I, I said, now I'm saying again to myself again when I woke up about, I think it was last weekend, I think it was on a Saturday morning I woke up. And I walked. I woke up to use the restroom. Then I looked at my both of my fezes on my dressing room. Saw the mm-hmm. red fez and the black fez. And I said, I never thought I'd become a boy, a nationalized right. boy, let alone a grand sheik. Right. You know. And I said, man. I said, I'm really. It's like a road that I'm traveling. Right. You know, face first to the to the, the, the Prince Hall Masons, and then to the Nation of Islam. Now I'm here. And right. the Washita dated the Mandia Moors. Right. And a grand chic at that. That's right. You know, I said, this, this is not a coincidence. No. Not. This is the road I'm supposed to travel. Right. And I think I had reached, uh, I had reached the end of that road. This is where I'm supposed to be. Right. Matter of fact, I know it is. Mm-hmm. Well, I know there's a lot of information in which that, even though I was into Afrocentricity, black power, and, um, you know, the white man, the devil, you know, I was into all of that. But somewhere around um, the early 90s, you know, I was already studying various other books, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, um, Before God's Presence, and interpreted by John P. Stott, um, 
different other metaphysical books in which that caused me to expand my mind. You know, also I was studying Gerald Massey's works, Engineers of the Light of the World, um, right. Simmons' books, The Red Dragon, The Magic Wand, The Magic Temple, The Ancient um, Sciences of the Cosmic Masters. I was reading all of these particular books, you know, always expanding my mind because in Islam we was taught, you know, up on the Mount of York, as well as also within Orthodox Islam, Sunni Islam, we are taught to seek knowledge from the credit to the grave. Mm-hmm. You know, we were also taught to seek knowledge even if it's in China. So wow. my mind stayed within the confines of just Afrocentricity, but always wanted to expand and explain more of these connections, you know, and I knew that it went deeper than just the Illuminati. You know, right. I knew about the Illuminati back in the early 90s. We was already on college campus saying, oh, yeah, you heard of Illuminati, the 13 bloodline families? This is before the books were written by, um, um, what's his name? David Icke. Um, by David Icke. Books before, way before right. him. Way before him. You know, we talking about, you know, we talking about um, before William, um, before uh, William Bill Cooper. You know, right. talking about before him. Right, before you know, him. And talking about the late 80s, early 90s, you know, right before he came out with the urgent classic course, Behold a Pale Horse, you know, that confirmed everything in which that we knew. But everything in which that was in that book, we already knew, basically. Huh. But so, yes, we just had that book for GP purposes, you know, for GP, for per- you know, um, just to um, prove to others, um, Negroes, that this is actually what was going on. Exactly. You know, that's the only reason why we even had that book. You know, other than that, we knew about the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Lees, the Morgans, the Merovingians, the, the um, Reynolds, the Rothschilds, the Russells, the Van Dynes, the Astros, yeah. the Bunnies, the Collins, the DuPonts, you know, the Kennedys, the Onassis. We knew about all of the 13 blood families. You know what I'm saying? We knew about them already. You know, so, you know, um, all this phenomenon nowadays, you know, 20 some odd years later, you know, with um, Negroes getting caught up on the Illuminati and, you know, right. what they're doing to, you know, that stuff. Man, shit, we heard that shit, you know, over 20 years ago. And, <laughs> um, you know, and then, you know what I'm saying, um, and was trying to find ways in order to actually, you know, um, correct the process of what was taking place to kind of act what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, the shit is just becoming a fad, just like we heard last week about. Um, a dude actually trying to kill um, his friend in order to get initiated into um, the music industry, you know, mm-hmm. because he did the blood sacrifice in order to reach the top levels and all of this bullshit. Man, right. if we even thought about some shit like that back in the days, you know, um, um, one of the one of our brothers, you know what I'm saying, right next to you probably would have took your ass out. Right. You know, because he wasn't playing none of that. Right. You know, we was we was um into this information for the love of it for real. And we wasn't selling out. There was no sellout policy during that time period. Now you can't say that, you know, based on all these um you know, um sellouts, you know going on right now. But during that time period we was into no sellouts for real. You know, and we were serious about this. It was more tight. I feel like it was more tight then. Right, it was definitely more tight because we lived together, we ate together, we went out and um made money together, everything is based on um, togetherness. You know, nowadays, you know, everybody want to be separate. They want to be, you know, um, you know they want to um, do their own thing. You know, so, you know, that, that wasn't even a way that we go back then. So our whole mindset is different. Matter of fact, we prayed five times together as Muslims um, a day. You know what I'm saying? We read the Quran at night for hours. Or other books, you know. I mean, when he was up in back to York, now kind of York at the time, he my niece, as he was called. I mean, he was real serious about um, our spiritual growth. You know, we knew uh-huh. about the ch- we knew about the Kundalini. You know, what I'm saying he taught about all of this information from that time period. Uh-huh. You know, what I'm saying so that's how we were able to expand our mind beyond just the confines of just you know our Islam. You know, of just you know, well, you wake up and you know do your prayers, do us. You know, um, you do your salats and your rock hots and um, you do those sort of, you know, um, five times a day and then, you know, that's it. You know, or you, you know, get um, a wife or either two, three or four of them and um, you provide for them. And in other words, it went beyond just the mundane um, levels. We understood real scientific 
analysis, we understood the factology, uh, factology that became later known as. We understood um, the body, the analysis, mm-hmm. and the endocrine gland system, the chakra system. You know, um, he told all of it. So, you know, we was already on another level, you know, as... Oh, no doubt. As, uh, yeah, you know, as so-called Muslims. You know what I'm saying? Far beyond um, the average, you know, um, so-called, you know, um, Muslim today or more. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of the more just come in nowadays, the only thing they know is um, Prophet over Ali. You know, and they can mimic, you know, um, or parrot, you know, word for word, the oral statements and prophecies, or they can, you know, quote word for word, you know, Holy Cross Circle 7 or the um, 101 or 102s or et cetera. But when it comes to the Holy Breath, they don't know shit about it. <laughs> You know, but yet in their oh, um, Holy Quran, so the seven, it particularly tells them that um, only the holy breath will make you uh, one again with the law, you know, in harmony and peace. You know, mm-hmm. so only the holy breath. So if you're not even focusing, so if you're not teaching the signs of the holy breath, then you'll never get um, reconnected to a law. You'll right. never regain the old time religion. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it's talking about. You know, so since that is the case, when most Moors talk, they're always talking from a mundane level. And it has shit to do with um with reconnecting me and Allah together. Right. Or be or themselves back to Allah. It always got to do with um well, brother, you know, that's what the prophet said. You know, and this is the um narcissism which has been um perpetrated right now in the so called conscious community. Um, and morals are falling for this nonsense, and they're losing themselves once again. Um, and just like they lost themselves in white Jesus, just like some lost themselves in UFOs coming down to save them, just like some um, have lost themselves in other methods or other uh, men, or even if they focus on the Bible, biblical characters in which that did not physically exist. Uh-huh. characters. You know what I'm saying? And people are actually have lost themselves, you know, because this is things in which they was taught or that they have come to believe, but yet it was never anything of the higher substance. It was never dealing with the higher self, the higher nature, the higher mind. Mm-hmm. You know, so these are the things in which they have transpired, Brother L, and uh, what's your thoughts about it? Exactly. Uh, I, I I agree, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, like I said a little earlier, it's a, it's a, a you know, sort of a travel that we go through, right. and that we need to know that, that we need to go through in order to deal with, with the future, what we're going to be about. Right. You know, like you know, going to the uh, going past the fourth, even to the fifth dimension, and we right. have to be prepared for that. Uh, mainly, especially spiritually, and mentally, and emotionally. Uh, or health wise, uh, how to start eating more better food, uh, 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 for spiritual, uh, for spiritual reasons as, as well as for health reasons and physical reasons. Right. And uh, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a travel. Like I said, uh, I never thought I'd be in the, uh, the Prince of Masonic fraternity. I never thought I'd be in that. I never thought I'd be in the nation. I never thought I'd be a more. You know, because a lot of times earlier in my life, I was interested in nothing like that. Right. You know, and uh, that stuff would kind of bore me, you know, until I really got into the sciences of these three uh, 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 subjects. And uh, then I said, wow, this is what I've been missing all this time. Why couldn't I get off into this earlier in my life, you know, and find well, myself well, angry at myself? Right. Well, the re- only reason why is because um, they never told us that it was about the science, the real science of saving soul. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all there really is. You know, the soul is God. You know, mm-hmm. the soul dwells within the holy, you know, within the, within its holy temple, which is the physical body. So really, you know, it's about soul saving. In other words, um, giving enough information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you know, to the soul so that as it leaves the physical body, um, it will know um, various amounts of information concerning um, that particular incarnation that it just came from 
or develop the golden dragon body in which that will actually spiritualize the flesh um, of the human body and thus um, the flesh and the soul becomes one and therefore um, you lose no consciousness. You can exactly. stay conscious. In other words, you have spiritualized the flesh. So these exactly. are two um, things in which that oftentimes can um, happen to manifest. Um, you know, but we're going to go here, um, Brother Ellis, to the phone line. You got some calls. We're going to go okay. to area code 404. Area code 404, you're on the line. Greetings, brother. Uh, this mm-hmm. is Brother Waters in Jacksonville. Just uh, tailing y'all up and <laughs> listening to the conversation. Uh, keep up the work. Tell the queen I say hello and uh, the brother Sheik there. Uh, listening and trying to gain as much as I can. Peace, bro. Peace, thank oh, God. Thank you, thank you, Brother Waters. Same to you and your fam, I. Thank right, you, bro. We got every code seven zero six seven zero six. You're on the line. Every code seven zero six. What's going on, Brother Sheik? How you doing, Alan? So, all right, oh, well, very well, very well, God. Good, good. Um, man, Bay, this is the second week in a row you don't lined up with me, man. Last week you was on the healing. I called in about my tooth, and now we're on this psychic stuff. Uh, right. Yeah, today uh, I went out for me a little walk, and I had an African lady stop me while I'm going to walk, and she said uh, she thought I was somebody else. And so we smiled about it. She said, oh, you, I thought you were somebody else, and I thought that was interesting. And so I continued to walk, and then I, as I was coming back down, it was a car. I heard a car in the back of me speeding kind of fast. We're in the neighborhood, so I said, my, my sensor came up on me. I said, this car coming up too fast. Some said, be alert. And so um, I kept walking, and then uh, sure enough, the car came, and it came to a halt real fast. It just stopped. And I just stopped walking and turned around and looked at it. And I couldn't recognize who was in it. I, I know it was like a, a great key or something. And uh, it banged up and went back up the street fast. But, you know, like I'm saying, is uh, my sister told me, you know, it was coming down and heard it. It said, be aware of this. Something said, be aware of this car coming back right here, coming down. And so, true enough, I, had, I don't know what that was all about. But, uh Deja vu, I have plenty of those, and uh, I've been told that that just means that I'm lined up and I'm walking into whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, basically, deja vu experiences is just is just that, brother. Um, as a matter of fact, um, your mind um has the ability you know, to project itself into the future on various timelines, and deja vu is actually just like you said, aligning yourself up on that timeline in order to um let it take place. You know the good things in which that's supposed to take place for you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes um, it might have a negative setting or feel to it when you're in certain um, positions, you know, but um, overall, when you recognize these double experiences, um, they transform to positive events. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, they, uh, this, um, uh, yeah, I had lucid dreaming, um, uh, I've been really trying to do that, and uh, I'm very interested in it. And I probably have already been doing it. And, uh, right. But what is it like? Now, I generally lay on my back anyway with my hand to the side. I'm more comfortable that way anyway. And um, sometimes when I drift off and I be actually thinking about it, a fear come over me. And mm-hmm. I like, I be like, nah, I ain't going to do that. I'm just going to go on the street. I don't, I don't know where the fear will come from, though. I mean, I right. guess my subconscious or something, but it's something a fear come over me, and then I maybe I'm up out of my body and don't know it, but I'll be like, I'm just going to go to sleep. Cause I don't know what be happening. I try to forget about it. Right. Well, astral projection or astral travel takes place from the solar plexus. So um, the reason why you might feel fear because um, connected to the solar plexus is actually, is actually your adrenal gland. So. Um, your adrenal glands produce adrenaline, so therefore the fear factor. So um, if they are weak and deficient in any way, then of course you might feel fear. So one of the um, good things that you can do is take vitamin B complex, in particular B12 and B6. 
um, as well as also just various herbs so that you can take uh, relaxants, in which that is like um, lobelia, as well as also uh, valerian root. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. We're going to go to right. um, another call here. All right. Peace, God. You're going to go to area code 512. 512, you're on the law. Peace, Lynn. What's going on? Peace. Peace, peace. Peace, brother Raglan. Uh, peace, God. <laughs> yo, yo, man. You you were right, Lynn. You you predicted the future tonight because I, I fell asleep right off a, right after I got off Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I, that's normally what you do, bro. So there ain't no prediction. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's been happening the past couple of weeks. Well, you see, there was no sun today. You know, right. I, it, it, was, it was just, you know, and then days like that, well, it's just, I don't know, it, it, when it's just cold and there's no sun, it's like, you know, where's the life at, you know? Right, right. I got right. you. I know oh. right. And mm-hmm. that, that type of feeling, oh. I was about to say I, I I definitely got I definitely got some experiences to share. I know I told you about a couple of them, but you building on um, psychic phenomena and uh, and things of that nature, right? Right. Right. All right. Well, I tell you, I, you, you used to have this because you know I grew up with my with like my uh, my Asiatic brothers. You know they were named. Uh, Yap and he, they were from Vietnam. So we used to always go, and you know, back then I was in that whole type of dogma of, you know, Christianity. And so when I was in that type of thinking, but I used to pray all the time. Well, he'd say, "Don't go down to the tennis court." We wouldn't even be playing tennis. We'd just be playing soccer or whatever. He said. Uh, I don't, I don't like it whenever you go down to the to the tennis court because every time you pray the lights turn off, you know. And and I was like I don't know about that, but you know, let it be hold. Every single time that I pray the lights would turn off, you know. That could and be I never, a certain energy that you could be uh, sending through. I believe. Yeah, uh, I, I was I was really little. I didn't know what I was doing, but basically the lights were cut off every time I tried to pray because I used to have this habit, you know, of like, you know, just just the way I was raised. I mean, I used to pray all the time. I even prayed walking across the street, not even thinking about the cars coming, you know. <laughs> right. I, I was one of the, you know. Um, and then I, I had another one. I told Brother Elaine this um uh, now that this this one is pretty cool. This more has to do. So you know, of course, I love Dragon Ball Z. You know, especially as a kid, still love it now. But I, you know, always watching those shows, and I would always try to shoot energy beams at my hands, right? Right. Okay. All right, and yeah, like basically. Okay, and then what happened was uh, my cousin, you know, my cousin would always try to, like, kind of mess with me. You know, he was kind of like one of those one of those people when he got here and my other grandmother got mm-hmm. here, he would yeah, always try to reign over me. Now, like, the thing about right. me, I was one of those people that was, like, I ain't like just because you were older to have authority over me. You know, I would respect my parents, but as far as teachers, these different people trying to tell me what to do, I didn't really like that, you know. So when it, when it came to him always trying to pick over me, yeah, he, he got me a couple times. But uh, we were on these, uh, this trampoline, and he kept, um, you know, we were jumping around. He kept pushing me down. I was like, yo, I'm getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of it. Uh-huh. He did it again. I'm like, I'm I'm getting tired of it until about now. He pushed me down again. I went, ah! And we still can't explain it today, but according to what he said, 
basically, he, you know, he got pushed back, and according to him, this beam of energy, you know, sh- shot exactly. out my hand and pushed him back. Mm-hmm. Still can't explain it. <laughs> well, I'll explain it. Let me explain that for you. Um, let's first go back to the light incident. Um, um, I would use I I still to this day can walk past um, um light poles and turn them on or even turn them off based on my vibration rate and the thoughts. So that's mm-hmm. what's going on with you about the light and your prayers. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as the light coming from your hands. That's real simple, too. Um, as a matter of fact, around 2004, 2005, um, my wife and I was laying in the bed, and we had this blanket in which that, as my hand ran across it, blue sparks would come from my fingertips, would come out my hand. Wow. And I showed oh, wow. her, and she can verify this to you right now. Um, as a matter of fact, she's listening. She can verify that to you. And... You know, so I know exactly what you're talking about. This is real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You are an electromagnetic being. You know? And I, I, you know, like, mm-hmm. I would say that was a little chi there, too. Chi right. energy. He was moving your, right, he was moving your um, Easter egg body. Um, that's the same thing which that Bruce Lee um, talks about, you know, talked about back in the days, was um, being able to do the one-inch, two-, three-inch punch. That was actually moving of your Easter egg body and which says about two inches above your physical body, which happens to be guess what color? Blue. Right. No, you I know, I've so. seen it when whenever I was in see because me and my mom me and my mom's I don't know who else can, can can really do it, but me and my mom's always been able to see uh forest. You know, we we've always been able to to do that. But I was gonna say as far as far as when I do when when that happened, uh, basically, like, you know, when you rub your hands or something, I don't know, they used to do it in science, in science class, and, like, your hair would stand up, mm-hmm. you touch the, basically, but, you know, because I was on a, a trampoline, and because I have, you know, electromagnetism circulating through my body, I started thinking, you know, that it must have amplified it. You know, and then, of course, the sun being, you know, on top of me. What do you think, Elaine? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you are a theory and being. I, and, you know, the sun shining. The energy is coming down to you, you know what I'm saying, to your melanin. And, of course, mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to have an interaction. There's no doubt about it. Just like when I was about nine years old in Coney Island, again, um, I jumped off this high wall. The wall had to be at least a story tall. And I jumped off the wall, and as I, as I was coming down, the brother said it looked like I was moving in slow motion. Now, in my mind, I was trying to move in slow motion like the bionic man. You know what I'm saying? And right, then, right. Right. And so as I came down, he said, man, it looked like he was coming down in slow motion. And I was like, so that was verification that the mind makes it real. Not just for you, yeah. but also for others, too. Oh yeah, time, I would have mm-hmm. to say. Right. It was mm-hmm. another time when my wife and I was taking um one of her friends to um to work. And they can tell you that I slowed down time. Because mm-hmm. she was about to be late. And I was only going about maybe, you know, fifty miles an hour or whatever in order to get there. I wasn't speeding anything. And she got there five minutes before her time. And so she always talked about that and my wife can verify it. That um that I was able to slow down time, you know what I'm saying. So those things always is part of you. These are the gifts in which that you develop, and when you're conscious of it, you can actually do these particular things. You know what I'm saying, or for yourself or either for others. Well, I was gonna say. Well, I, I, I was dealing with I was dealing with Nancy Richardson. She told this funny story. She said whenever we would go. We we go because she didn't like to go, you know, out in places sometimes because she's kind of like me, you know. She's just kind of like a sponge, you know, when it comes to energy. 
but she was like, you know, we would go to these different places and the lean would be there, and the lean would just draw the people. You know? <laughs> 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 he, just, he would use his energy and just draw the people in, in Walmart. You know, just right. walking well, down the aisle. Well, that's because, you know, I, I do my Qigong and Tai Chi every day in some shape, form, or fashion, whether it's me gong or either way gong, I have to do it, and that magnetizes my aura. So for the people who, you know what I'm saying, um, are conscious or semi-conscious, they can become attracted to me or know who I am. Because, like, my wife would tell you that we go going to restaurants or we're going to gas stations. We're going to, you know, multiple places, and people always come up to me and say, you got to leave my way. <laughs> you know, you know, all you got to email, baby? Man, we were on a cruise ship. The cruise ship hey. was just broke. And the brother um, said, I'm just going to take a chance. He didn't call or anything, so I'm just going to take a chance and see if they did. If not, you know, uh-huh. um, him and the girl was going to enjoy the trip. We happened to bump into him in the Sphinx room in front of statues of truth and common in all black and gold. Uh, and he would take me and Brother wow. Alan Wyatt taking pictures along with my wife and his mate, Majay, and he's taking pictures. And then all of a sudden, the brother, we looked across the room, and the brother and his girl is taking pictures. And he didn't even know we was going to shit, you know. But guess what? I, he come up on yeah, the Brother Aleem, oh man, man, I'm so glad to see you, man. Shoot, we didn't know if y'all was going to be here or not. We just took a chance and came. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, mm. You know, this, you know, I mean, things, you know, you know, things look to be by an order. You know? Oh, I remember yeah. that's why I gave a story before about the fact of, um, of um, when I was receiving my galactical name, I was in a trance and my higher self told me what my galactical name was. And I came out the um out the bedroom into the front room and the sister came out the back and she said, Well, what you thinking about? I said, Oh, I'm thinking about, you know, what the ancestors told me, you know, what um my higher self told me about, you know, what my galactical name was. And she sat down and out of all the millions and billions of names on the planet in various cultures and languages, she say the name of what that they told me. Now, how is that possible? Hmm. Yeah, well, it can't be a coincidence. Right, there's only two things that could have happened. Either I transferred it to her unknowingly, or she got it from the same place I got it from. That's the only two two ways of seeing that. And that's not the first time dealing with my name, you know what I'm saying? Because when I got the name Arlene, you know, I already picked it out out the Muslim name book which meant the all-knowing is one of the, is the 19th attribute of Allah. Me being born on the 19th um, month of Aries, you no, know, what is known, month of um, April, I didn't even realize it was the 19th attribute of Allah. But my girl at the time comes over to the room, and she gets the book and says, oh, yeah, let me um, see that. You no, know, I'm going to help you, you know, pick your name. She comes back with the exact same name, Eileen, you know what I'm saying, a day later. And I I didn't tell her You know So I mean That's that's phenomenal If I would If it was on People here on my screen It is Because I mean It lets lets you know That you're doing the work You know I say Mm -hmm. that because Sometimes I think It's hard for the people Because they're so caught up Into into the damn You know The 9 to 5 Or whatever You know And Mm -hmm. they just they don't know. You don't know whenever the ancestors are trying to talk to them. Me and Brother L. Hey, Brother You know what I'm saying? For those who want to, for those who want to call in, call in at six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. If you want to call in in order to ask some questions or tell about your experiences. Am I still on? Yeah, you still on the mic. Still hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was saying, I was saying, people get caught up in, in, into that. They don't understand that you know the divine is trying to talk. Right. 
Exactly. That's how they talk. You know, and yeah. the, what they call synchronicity. Right. Well, that's only if they can get it out, brother. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to say, I, I used to have, if y'all seen um, the X-Men, I, I can describe basically, I guess I've been having the, you know, experience all my life. I'm pretty sure that Princess uh, can definitely relate. If, if you've seen the movie um, X-Men, right? Right. Do you remember, uh, there's one of the girls on there named Rogue. Yeah. The well, cool basically, pop. yeah, the, when, the, the, the most, when people ask me, you know, what's, what's with you? You know, why do you always got to sometimes be kind of like a hermit? Like, why is it hard for you, you know, to go in these places with large amounts of people and stuff? I was like, because I take everything in, yo. <laughs> you know, mm. like, that type of, that type of thing. People don't understand that, but that's the best that I can tell people when it comes to my different types of powers that I have. Right, you were what is to. definitely that. I think it's called clutch sentience. Right. And is it well? It, it, it's a lot because what people can feel, and they have to look out outside of themselves, and they have to go to a large group amount of people to feel something exciting. And all I got to be is just in one room, you know, and I can get that same amount of feeling. Right. You know. I think I, I think uh, I think your wife has that, doesn't she? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has that ability. So she yeah, does. I mean, when it, you don't got to do that. Well, when we went to the Chiang place. It was just a regular old building until they started putting, you know, basically it was just a ballroom. But Mm -hmm. once they started putting up the pictures, started putting up, you know, Buddha statues, started putting up pictures of the yin and yang sign, started setting up the mat, it was transformed just like that. And once they had the music on, that place was different automatically. Wow. So I think... I think the fifth dimension is, is already here. We just got to access it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fifth dimension. Right. Right. Know how to access it. Right. And the more that you deal with energy, the more that you become part of it. There's no doubt about it. Um, hold on. We got a call from three three six. Area code three three six. You on the line? Hey, what's going Please. on, brother? Peace out. How you doing? Peace, peace, God. Peace. This is uh, Robert from uh. From Greensboro, man. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of little things, little phenomena, man. Uh, I had one back when I was like at the left. Um, you know, I said we all stayed in this little small apartment, but I was the only one that had all these. I say feelings, you know. And uh, one time, uh, I was in the bed, man. I think it was like I heard my grandfather or somebody, but it was a head. Like right there where the wall was at, and they was looking at me, trying to say something. I was just covering them in my head because mm. I was young and I didn't know what was going on. And um, let's see, I had a dream, and like one time I had told told my lady, had a dream that I was sitting in the Morris class, right? You know, getting taught, and um, and let's see. Next week, I got a call from he told me that uh, it's, it's uh, a couple guys that come to his lodge and they start the whole classes every other Monday. So, I mean, I, like recently, man, I, I grabbed a, uh, a pen and a pad and the things that's going to take place, you know, for that day before what happened. And, man, it's all falling the line, man. I mean, everything. Everything that I'm writing is falling into place. It just, you know, it's a good thing. You know, I, I, I get visited uh, from my grandmother. 
my big mom, uh, my grandfather. I had uncles, my well, great uncles that that come and visit me. I'm not afraid of them now because I know that their presence is around. And, uh, it's a psychic that I can want to talk to some time to time. And she told me that a lot of my family members, or even a lot of my ancestors, is coming back to help my lady out to get her enough speed on things to be up there with me. You there? Hello. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but that's, that's all I wanted to share. Um, I, I get visited uh, often. We yeah, appreciate you sharing, brother. Yeah, no problem. <coughs> hey, brother Aline? Yeah. Yo, Miss Blue doesn't live in Austin, does she? I yeah. believe so. Everybody there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got the static in the line there. Yeah, the static yeah. on the line. But can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, brother Mike, I, um, yeah, I believe she do um stay there in Austin, Texas. She got what? Waiting all this time for a damn reading. I was like, she was right here. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. I got this two stay near that area. Wow. See, no, that's synchronicity right there. Mm-hmm. You're waiting for the one oracle, you know. <laughs> that's like, that's what uh, Sister Nancy was telling me. And then I was like, what? No mm-hmm. way. I knew she was from New York, but yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. I was going to tell you, I am going to um, a retreat this weekend, so I'll be sure to pick up, you know, we pick up for that, but they're they're calling it uh, the the Jedi Activation. Okay. Of course, we know what the you know what the jet means. They're basing it off that. Right. The spinal column, right? The backbone of Osiris. Mm-hmm. Right. The line sound a whole lot better now. So let's get back to the topic of discussion. Right. Um, we want more calls. Call in. So six two six four one four thirty five thirty five six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Call in right now, especially if you're in the chat room and you've been listening the whole time. Call in and tell us some of your um, experiences in life and some of these strange occurrences, as well as also psychic phenomena in which that is taking place. Uh, being that it's my show, I have felt like I had to definitely um, have gone to my own experiences in order to generate enough interest uh, within the, um, others in order to get the information out. So definitely for those who are listening, 626-414-3535. 626 Give us a call in. Yes, sir. All right, brother L, you got any um, I mean, anything else you want to build on as far as the topics concerned, strange occurrences, and psychic phenomena? Uh, yes, sir. Check it out. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, I, I have you have any one of you brothers ever heard someone called your name when you're somewhere eating somewhere out, uh, uh, uh in a, a restaurant or a cafe, in a cafeteria anywhere? And what I know I have, uh, see, in the earlier days, they used to call me Junior. And they still call me that, family members do. And I was eating, uh, I believe it was what we call the Central West End. I was eating outside uh, this restaurant. And I heard somebody say, Junior. No, no, one, no one calls me that. Right. No one calls me that. Or uh, so family members or somebody way back in my childhood past. Right. You know, and I turn around, I look, I look, you know, but I didn't see anybody. Mm-hmm. I like, because uh, uh, there was two incidents like that. There was another incident uh, when I was overseas. I heard somebody call my name, the other brother, but that was eating with me. 
I heard someone call my name. He said, did you hear that? I said, yes, I did hear it, you know. But we looked around to see if anybody we knew. There was nothing, nothing anyone there. But I wonder if any one of you brothers ever had that, that experience. Well, yeah, I definitely had those experiences, Brother L. And um, oftentimes, it's um, actually is an ancestor, which is like, for example, the first one that you said, uh, when they called you Junior, I would think that probably was one of the answers, like you said, um, someone who you knew um, as a child and so forth and so on. So, you know, oftentimes they do um, call out to us, you know, in order to um, let us know that they're still there, that they're still here with us, you know. And so um, I think a lot of times that is what occurs based on my analysis and based on information that I've gathered in my own experiences. You know, mm-hmm. and um, I definitely had those same experiences as well as, um, you know, I mean, I've had it, you know, when I'm dreaming, you know, and, um, you know, someone called my name, you know what I'm saying? But there's no one there, but yet I'm in a dream, and I don't see no one in my dream, and when I wake up, there's no one there either. So, obviously, there's a bridge or gap in between um, the doorway of communication with the ancestors, and I think they take advantage of that. And if we knew how to take advantage of it, I think we would do, um, do more, too. Um, hold on. Let's go to the phone lines. we got 773, every code 773 on the line. Peace. Hello. Peace. 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 What's going on, brothers? Nice show tonight. I want to go in about the, um, right. the, the psychic abilities. You know, they, mm-hmm. they showed us back in the day when they came out with the um, – the eight ball, you know, you can shake up the eight ball and it, it close the talking right. to it. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So, after, I mean, after, like after the seventh chakra, where you really consider, you know, you, when you get the two unions of the brain, you consider, you know, with the crown, that's considered yeah. the eight. So, you consider the infinity. So, I guess the eight ball, which is, you know, the, which is the last ball on the pool table, you know, which is your last chakra. I mean, you know, they, they show you when you shake it up. So, they, I mean, you know, when you go into yourself, Go past that eighth chakra, and then you know you can, I guess you know get answers or whatever you want. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. That's how you can get Right, right. Because right. right. you, you know they, they show you they show you with mm-hmm. the black and white. You know, as right. uh, I guess it's, I guess like in between, you know, the balance in between the spiritual and the physical. So right. when you get to that when you get to that eighth point, which is you know people be expounding on the forty four, the law of forty four, which is nothing but the eighth. So I guess it's the eighth chakra. You get that balance, and, you know, you can go in and see yourself and, you know, get answers that you need. Yeah, that's how chess is. The checkerboard. Right, board. right. Mm-hmm. Right, right. The law of the eight. So, you know, like I say on, on the pool table, it's the last pocket. The eight ball is the last pocket. And then at the end of a race, you got the black and white, you know, at the end of your race, you know, your last stage of evolution, I guess, you know. Right. right. You could say. Well, it also looks like two serpents, you know, together merged. Right. Right. Also, somebody to the yin and yang principle, the um, infinite or infinity symbol turned sideways is the eight. As well as right. the fact that the eight um, divide themselves in mitosis, known as your blast the floor. The eight cells are that never change the whole entire experience, the whole entire life. So right, right. Number, um, vital. Right. Okay, and then they show you again, like on uh, with the first total recall, you know, when uh, Swartz nigga, he come in, and uh, I guess he, he get on the ship, and it's a bunch of kids running to him trying to read his palm. And then mm-hmm. all of their bra- all of their left sides of their brain is uh, it's kind of like shown out. And the guy like uh, Swartz nigga, like, what happened to them? And the guy like, uh, something happened to them, you know? Right, I remember that scene. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, sort of recall is nothing but a metaphysical movie. You know, recall another no self. Doubt. You know, remembering the body of Osiris. No doubt. Right. Right. That Martian energy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I just wanted to go in on that for a second. Nice show, y'all. Nice, nice show. Yeah. See, see, people appreciate it, Link. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're tired of UFOs. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> you see, you see that guy. You yeah, see that guy with the crazy hair. <laughs> right. All right. We'll go to 910. 910. We'll call 910. You're on the line. Peace. 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 
Anyone there? No, there brother? Yeah, we hey, there. what's going on? Hey. Can you get me? Peace. What's up, Ali? What's up, man? Hey, man, this is Tiger Jaw. I was checking out your show, man. It's well, awesome. I appreciate you, huh? Appreciate this. Look, man, check this out. Uh, you know, the brother was talking about the 8 and 8 ball and all that kind of good stuff, but, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, I, you know I, it kind of lost me there for a second. When I started thinking about it, you know, I was always talking about you know, the 8 ball, why I had to be black, you know, like the white ball chasing the ball. I went to a totally different direction. But yeah. I do believe that it's kind of the new beginning, so, because we think the recreation was 8 and 7 days, and then there's 8. 8 means it's right. time to do something new, you know. Mm-hmm. Like in 2008, you know, another year, another year represents something new to come in, you know. So that's what I'm feeling about mm-hmm. the eight. Now, now I never it's chakra. So tell me more about. It. I just got in like two seconds ago. Oh, okay. Well, you know, when you're dealing with the chakras, um, they actually uh, physically is your endocrine gland system. You have um, um, seven major endocrine glands in your body. You have your pineal gland, pituitary gland, your thymus, thyroid glands, your adrenal glands, your spleen. Um, within the woman, the uterus, and the clitoris, within the male, the prostate, and the testes. So those are the seven major endocrine glands in the body. And, of course, you know, there's more in which that have developed. You have uh, one under the chin, which is known as the beriferi gland, and then one at the roof of the mouth called the um, epiphany gland. So these glands even growing now within the body of um, many people in which that is um, coming into this consciousness in which that or God consciousness, in which that is, um, you know, basically is developing more chakras, you know, um, than just um, seven or eight and going into nine. And some um, say that soon we will develop actually 12. In other words, there'll be more organs inside of our bodies, more glands, in which that is um, becoming activated um, throughout right. the internet. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking there was more than eight. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, right. I was correct then. There are more than eight. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Because not that I really get into it, but, you know, back in the day, I used to do a little bit of reading, Sean, Sean, Sean. So, oh, yeah. so I was like, eight hey, chakras. I, I was thinking there was at least 12 or more, you know. Right. That's pretty right. good stuff, right. though. That's pretty good stuff. But now, mm-hmm. if I could, I just want to kind of change this to, like, the holistic side of the of the, uh, right. the side of it. Mm-hmm. I have, like, a backache, and I want to try to do something metaphysically to eliminate it, either with herbs or either with meditation. You know, since we're talking right. about the cha, the chakra, can you tell me how I can channel energy into the back so that I can get my own personal healing? Right. Well, you know, there's, a certain, yeah. there's certain herbs in which that you can use in which that won't, um, probably won't mess with any of the herbs or any of the medicines that, um, in which that a person may take. Uh, one of them would be comfrey. You want to check out comfrey and alfalfa. Um, those two are real good for um, for um, the bones and for the muscles. Um, as far as a breath technique, one of the things which I would say is learning the fire breath technique, in which that um, does a lot of moving of the lower um, abdomen area, in which that um, pulls the back in and, and pushes the back out in order to work it, in order to um, not just work the um, lower and large intestines or small and large intestines, but also the kidneys um, area. So those okay. would be some in order to learn to what's called the fire breath technique. Uh, what happens is that um, for about 10 minutes a day, you just simply um, breathe in and out through your nose real rapidly. Oh, that one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can feel the cleansing throughout your whole body as begin to burst, but in particular the lower abdomen and the back end, you should feel a whole lot uh, relieved from um, pressure. So therefore... Um, you should, um, after, I guess, probably a few days or weeks after doing it, you shouldn't experience any more um, back problems. Okay. Cool. Yeah, well, I mean, can you, can you say where, like, where in the back are you feeling the pain? Yeah, this is the lower spine. Uh, tailbone, lower coccyx. Surround the coccyx. The, tail, the lower tip of the tailbone. Right. Okay, so it, it's more so on the bone. It's not like on the muscle, right? Well, it no. is a muscle. I went and had the, uh, the doctors check it out yesterday, and what they're saying is the medical term is lumbar strain, which layman's term is pull the back muscle. That's the lower right. back muscle. Does it, does okay. It, does it feel well, tight? yeah, you might want to, I mean, I don't know, if, if you have a wife or a girlfriend or 
or somebody you can get in and you can get you a massage, get you like a, one of those what's called a deep tissue massage and tell them to focus on, you know, that area. Okay. That will also help. All right, yeah, Mike good idea. Also, uh, no, I don't have a wife or, uh, or a girlfriend, but if we out there, well, and you're single, no, I'm just playing. But, uh, yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. Uh, uh, I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. Uh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> and, and TJ, tell the uh, joke. Kind of. well, I feel you, brother. But, but, but seriously, with the hot rocks, though, I'm thinking that, that I want to try, and I have heard of the deep tissue massage. The other thing is, uh, last week, I was at my cousin's house. She has an artificial rock map, but it maps up feet. And I guess it's uh, somewhere like designed by the Orient, but you walk on these rocks. And I did do that, and it does provide excellent relief to the body, not just your your spine, but feel it all the way up in the head because it was on nerves. So I was actually telling her that, you know, there's got to be a way that you can actually do this because this is a, a man-made plastic so if we were to take, like, right. quartz rocks and actually get them and either lay them on a cement floor or a piece of plywood, it probably get the same effect and better because you're using a natural stone. Right. It's a natural energy. Well, I was going to say that because I, I specialize that in, in that, brother. I mean, that's, that's what I do. So I was just saying, you know, I mean, if you got any back pain or any of that, you want to try to get every kind of, you know, component that you can get. So, you know, spiritual, physical, all that, you know, holistic approach, you know. But, yeah, doing all the breathing, all that's going to help. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Sometimes I will do it alone. Okay. But, yeah, no, no, nobody can really massage your spine area. Like, they can massage the, you know, the muscles, but as far as, you know, no, nobody can really put their elbow, you know, on your spine. You know what I'm saying? Well, as I said, it's not really the spine; it's the muscle above the above the lower tailbone center. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because it's real tight. You can feel the knot. Yeah, you can feel that knot. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, matter of fact, that, well, my sister was even it, thinking. If huh? you put a hot towel on it, would it help? I haven't even tried that yet. Someone just mentioned that earlier tonight before I got on the phone with you that maybe I should try a hot compress, and they gave me uh, some type of pad that you can warm up or whatever place there, and I was going to try that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm trying to go the holistic way before I get uh, Percocet and all that other stuff that is not right. prescribed. No, no, you know, no, that was no don't, don't do that, brother. <laughs> just, just try and get right. you a deep right. tissue massage right. if you can. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. I can do that. All right. Cool. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Uh, this is a wonderful show. I'm glad I got in on it. And uh, I'm gonna say good night. But hey, thank you for the for the uh, how should I say this? The enlightenment. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Appreciate it. Peace, God. <laughs> Peace, brothers. Peace. Peace, God. All right. We got area code seven zero. Seven zero six. You're on the line. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Um, I had called in earlier, but I uh, I remember some. My mother told me something on the uh, subject of um, the ancestors looking out there, man. She had an incident that that terrified her after she figured out what what had happened. She was in South Carolina. Uh, she was taking a walk also. And uh, this car approached her, and uh, this guy was in it. She said he was looking like mean, just looking mean as hell. And um, he wouldn't let her get past her. And every time she would walk, he would move the car. Hmm. And then she would try to get out and around, and he would back the car up. So she said she just felt all her uncles and her brothers in her. So she said, come on, motherfucker, like that. And then he uh he ran away, and then she seen on the news the next day that man had raped and killed a girl, huh. and she said she just Damn. just got scared after that. But uh yeah, definitely the ancestors, you know what I'm saying, looking out for us. 
And my mama always been like that. She it was an incident that I had uh, when I was younger, doing some old crazy stuff, not knowing stuff. And uh, she uh, after it was all over said and done, she told me stuff about that incident, and she wasn't even there. And uh, she always did feel when I was in trouble. She said her heart would be hurt. And uh, oh, yeah. so, Mama knows, bro. Uh huh. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's so, always you, you can feel record. that though. Like, mm, there's always yeah. an ethereal cord. Even after the umbilical cord is cut, there's an um, ethereal cord between the child and the mother that always exists. And so she can always tune in to you. Mm-hmm. Always. I, I can tell you that for a fact. I, yeah. That's true. Oh, yeah. Anybody will know that, even if they're not really spiritual. Anybody, you know, mama knows. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, then, fella. Well, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for the add-on. That was beautiful. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace. Yeah, peace. See, that shows the power of the mind. You got another caller here, block a pick. Block a pick, you on. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, God.
So I was like, man, this thing is, man, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I definitely give you shots out for that because that made me dig into, uh, you know, just, just finding all these things out. Because I'm not from Virginia, and, and even in high school and everything, we understood there was a lot of natives on the land there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and man, but, man, it, yeah, it's so much deep that I'm really realizing something I always knew and felt anyway. I've always been here. I've always been there. And I, I, just, I was just knowing, okay, my great-grandmother's Indian. You know what I'm saying? So yep. I was like, man, and all of it just coming, man, it's coming back home and it's coming on in so quick, man. You know, it's a beautiful thing, man. Right. Well, your, soul, your soul is older than all that. Mm-hmm. No doubt, wow. no doubt. I, I'm looking at the map right now. I, I got a page up on my, on, 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 uh, I was just looking over some stuff like the Saponi was in Ochanichi. That's the area I'm from in Virginia. I'm looking at the map. We're in the Roanoke River, Valley, the Piedmont region. So, man, you know, yeah. Mm. That's, that's more that's more information that's saying that that uh, a lot of us are from from here originally. Exactly, exactly. Yes, sir, you know, exactly. We are, you know, exactly. the Aboriginal, the true Aboriginal Indigenous people of the North well, America. Well, it's told right? that that it's told that Egypt would rise in the West. Yes, it did. Exactly. Yeah, no doubt. It began to. So they no need to cut that yeah. shit with Barack Obama. No doubt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, 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 had, I had talked to a brother wait, wait, one time. Wait, wait. Is, is there? No, yeah, I I'm li- to... listening. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, more. No, I'm listening, brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I talked to a brother. He had a uh, uh, like something like a blog talk show here in the St. Louis, Missouri Republic, and uh, it was another moral. He was a grand sheik, and he was saying that. Uh, uh, Barack Obama hasn't done anything. He doesn't uh, do anything. He ain't did nothing his last term. Uh, he had more people killed. Uh, one of the presidents that had more killed than any other president that served uh, in the White House, and blah blah blah. And I was then I I, I kind of cut it on him and I said, well, well, hold on then, brother. Uh, I said, what do you got to realize? I said, Barack Obama. He, he doesn't do anything because he can't do anything. It's not that. It, it, I mean, you know, you got to realize, brother, he's a president of a corporation, not a, a president of the uh, American people. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. it's, it's, he, he got to do the things at the behest of a corporation, the Queen Elizabeth II, and at the Vatican Church of, the Rome, of Rome. That's right. You know, or else mm-hmm. he wind up like uh, JFK, mm-hmm. John yeah. F. Kennedy. So you know, right. uh, you 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 you, you, you got to understand that. You know, so I mean, I didn't like the way he's berating Obama, and I said, well, and you got to remember also that Barack Obama also is a Washington Moore as well. Mm. You hear me, his wife? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's just yeah. want to get that out there. It yeah. don't matter oh, yeah. because even if he didn't do anything as they claim, the fact is, is that he and his wife and children are in the White House have changed the minds of millions and billions of people upon this planet about the plight of so-called black people as well as them having to look at the rise of the moor. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he, he represents a symbol of change. Right. Right, right. Yeah. So he symbolizes what we supposed to be doing for ourselves. Remember, he said, um, the peop- the um, what you've been looking for has been at the um, end of your arm the whole time. That's what he was saying during the first election. So he was trying to make you think that the savior that you've been looking for has been at the um, end of your own hand the whole time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is about. We over here, damn, depending upon him to to raise us up in order to do something for us. Do it for your damn self. No doubt. Oh, yeah. And stop blaming some damn body else. That's why they do. Right. Anybody, well, anybody having that much pressure on them, you've seen all them presidents, you know, by the second year or whatever, their hair turned. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Look at Obama, yeah. look at Clinton, look at all of them. They they all had, um, you know, so-called black hair coming in, but by the time <laughs> of that second, third, <laughs> year, you're right. 
you see, that thing started turning white quick, didn't it? That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, and, and that's for trying to save everybody. That's right. Bush was so glad to get out of there, he didn't know what to do. Right. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about the Avion president, European president right. now. Right. Mm-hmm. Glad to get his ass out of there. Yeah, but shoot, matter of fact, he was so happy that um that, that Obama came in, that he voted for him to t- um, pass term. Ain't that something? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow it was an accident, knowing they were their cousins. <laughs> he, he accidentally voted for his cousin. Ain't that something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you didn't hear him, you didn't hear him campaign at all for Big Romney. Not at all. Not at all. No, he, wasn't for, he wasn't voting for Mick. He was voting for Obama. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's I didn't so want a here. president named Mick. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. <laughs> well, that definitely but was he, a strange But he didn't bring that change. Right. Because we in the age of knowing, we in the age of Aquarius, and this has changed. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. So, so someone asked yeah. about, um, do we have any plans for Bobby Hemet to come on? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You gotta get oh, in contact yeah. with Brother Bobby. Um, he hasn't been mm-hmm. doing too much here lately, you know. So um, if you can get him on, that definitely would be um, um, a blessing right there. No doubt. Mm-hmm. We done have Phil on as Brother Azariah, Hakeem Bay. Um, we done had Brother oh, Cabo yeah. on, you know, we done had, um, you know, many heavy hitters on, you know, we done had do Brother that, Panic, um... you know, Brother Panic on, you know, Brother Black Dot, so we done had him on, you know, we okay. definitely got to get Bobby up in the mix and Brother, and, um, Brother Daoud, you know what I'm saying, you got to get all the, um, Grand Masters of Metaphysics on here. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. right. We're going to do, we're going to do that part two, Elaine, with the cartoons. Yeah, we can definitely do that soon. All right. Hey, I'm still on. I'm still on. Yeah, yeah you still on, bro. Hey, I want to share just one more thing, man, because I'm I'm still like just staring at this map of Virginia, uh, divided up, you know, uh, from the 1600s. But but I've been reading a lot about on Powhatan, man, and and if any any other other callers or if any of y'all familiar with Virginia, man, at least one from. In Southern Virginia, like Powhatan, man. When we thought of Powhatan, you know what I'm saying? Like that's prison. That's what you going upstate for? You know what I'm saying? In the middle of nowhere, it's a Powhatan. It's one of the max secure uh, prisons in Virginia, right? But man, just realizing the knowledge of the Powhatan people in Virginia, they were so serious and so strong. And it, you know, just saying how now, okay, now in the mindset, most people they know nothing of that. But you say something about Powhatan, at least in the Piedmont region, you know, you're going upstate. You, you know what I'm saying, but for me, at least now, 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 now I see different. You know, when I hear power to now, that's the first thing that comes to mind of these natives. You know what I'm saying, who's just dominant on a coastal land. You know what I'm saying, on the coastal land, which is the tidewater region of Virginia to this day. Okay. You that's know what I'm exactly saying, uh, Williamsburg, Williamsburg, almost to be exact, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I'm saying, right. one of my favorite places to visit when I go home. You know what I'm saying, to the outlets and the Bush Gardens and all that in Williamsburg. You know what I'm saying, and man, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's yeah. power thing. But you know, back for us when coming up, you know, a power thing. You know, you think about you want to see somebody, or you don't want to go to power thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, you want to stay. Right. You know what I mean? That was a mighty, that was right. a powerful people. You know what I'm saying? It was a powerful movement, powerful people. Yeah, yeah. So it was Moors. And, Moors, um, right? Right. Yeah. I, matter of okay. fact, we were just okay. up in the uh, Williamsburg area. We were just up there a couple months ago in Williamsburg. So yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And see, I, I I didn't know that man until by way of listening to you. You know what I'm saying? Even being in, in customs a few years, you know what I'm saying? Until like right. a few weeks ago, it's like wow. And that's one of my favorite places to go when I go to Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Not mm-hmm. for the historical, just all that, but I like I love going to Bush Garden. And I like going right. to the outlet there. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Usually coming mm-hmm. from the beach or something. It's just my my stop. You know, not knowing, you know what I'm saying, I'm on sacred ground like that. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing this was a, a city within itself before we even. Any of this European stuff now that they glamorize there, the potteries and all that. You know what I'm saying? All that been there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, hold, hold on. Yeah. Let me call here. Eight zero four eight zero four. You on the line? Eight zero four. You on the line? Peace, peace, brother. Uh, I named this uh, cuckoo. 
Kufu Uzi or Magneto. Peace. 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 And uh, I want to add on. I want to add on and uh, uh, um, and uh, tell the brothers that I'm right here in Richmond, Virginia, right? And, and he can come on. He can he can go on, on up from Richmond up to Route Five to Rarano and and down on to Charles City. You ain't got nothing but any black Indians down there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hold hold y'all come. Hold y'all come. And um, uh, my white people. It's, it's from Piatain, and uh, 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 her 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 grandma looked like a little swan. Now, peep this out. I saw this YouTube piece. They don't they don't took the account. Uh, it uh it's fire, right? But uh, uh when when the, when the camera technology first came out in what the eighteen hundreds, uh, mm-hmm. some people took some pictures of these black people, and and these people stealing our birthright, taking our birthright. And, and make it mock rubber. But we was the people, I saw the pictures with my own eyes. And everybody I send the link to, it blow their mind. And I just put mm-hmm. it on with that. So I know how they look. I saw the features. They had the mm-hmm. kinky hair to the, to the, to the straight hair. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and look, let me add on. My granddaddy, my mama, daddy, you can put... Him and I want so that together, you think they brought us. Mm. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Peace. Peace. Wow. Peace. 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 Well, you know that, and what the doc say, he's the last movie in Pharaoh. So oh. Done. Oh. And let me add this on real quick. Right here on the Medical College of Virginia, you got a you got a uh, Egyptian temple right in the courtyard. With the, uh-huh. with the snake, with the two uh, uh, Felix at the entrance of it, and see, I ain't, I look, I don't walk past that something in that facility all my life. I didn't take notice of it until I went to Egypt, you know. Man, mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Egypt all over Richmond. Right, mm-hmm. sure is. Well, that's supposed to be Egypt in in uh, Washington D.C. It's made supposed to be like in Egypt. Yeah, it is. Um, and Benjamin Badaka or Ben Bay Emanuel Moore Ali, um, known as also as Prince Hall, designed it that way. But this is Egypt because you are the Egyptian people. Um, as a matter of right. fact, he just came back from the cruise to Cozumel to Mexico, and he had the tour guide <laughs> saying that you are the Olmec descendant and that they were the Black Egyptians. Hmm. This is a Mayan saying this. You know what I'm saying? Hey. So he said he had to tell the truth. He said something occurred four years ago in which that forced him to tell the truth. Of course, you know, that would be President Barack Obama becoming president of the United States. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what caused him to have to tell the truth about our existence here within the Americas as compared to us just coming from Africa 400 years ago. You know that the Omics were here at least 5,000 years ago. Right. You know, and that's been, um, and that's a minimal estimate. Right. Hey, bro- hey uh, Brother Ali, now, can yeah. you, can you, can you uh, add on to this? Okay, now, if the first eight presidents were more people of, right. of color, and, 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 and we was under the Articles of Confederation, what mm-hmm. happened? What happened with this British-American war? Now, they, they tell us America won the war. But I heard an old white man say that this Constitution is nothing other than a British document. Now, you know, can you add on? But I'd like to know, man, how did this Article of Confederation get overthrown? And okay. how did we come from the first eight presidents to, to, to being on the state? All right. Well, this is the thing of what occurred in which that led up to the Civil War, which was the South against the North, in which that the North was trying to stop slavery, and the slaves at the time were not black people. They were white. In particular, they were Irish. And so the blacks ran the South, and the blacks were not going to give up their slaves. So the North imposed sanctions upon the states in order to stop the slavers um, or the so-called masters from having slaves. And the blacks 
said, oh, hell no, you're not, because this is how we make it our money. We are, um, this is how the South was actually more economically sound than the North at the time. And so that led to the so-called war. See, they had us thinking that blacks were the ones in which that was slain during that time period, and not all of us were. It was actually right. white, in particular Irishmen, who was actually slaves at that particular time period. Yeah. Right. And, right? And this is documented. And, There's new books coming out right now in which that shows you and tells you about whites being slaves. And, and uh, Brother Ali. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brother Ali, and, and right here in Richmond, black people used to go to church and horse and buggy uh, free people. It, it's a yep. church right here on, on Broad Street, on the hill part mm-hmm. of Broad Street. It's the oldest black church in Richmond. Right. Mm-hmm. And they so were going to church like around. Big Rose going, going to church now mm-hmm. and, and find cars and stuff. Yep. So they switched. So they switch stuff around perfectly, you know, and this is why, um, you know, when people speak about history, about the um, African Holocaust, you know, those who are in higher borders understand that um, there was no Holocaust to the extent of which that um, has been told from some misguided um, historians and scholars, that a lot of that stuff was part of reconstructed history. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, they did. And, and they did all. The, they did all the killing in in uh, Russia and Poland. They don't want to speak on that killing, but ain't no killing go down like you said in uh, Germany, like they say. Right. You know, right. And, and see, and these American people, these some dirty people. They killed them, dumb, dumb uh, German people. They did those people bad. My granddaddy even said that. Was over there in uh, 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 Germany, and he said these these white American men are uh, uh, patent picking, desecrated the rubble, pissed in the mm. rubble, mm. and and mm. now these people, German people over here, ready to get their get back. They was raping the German women and everything. This was my mm. granddaddy said. He left a wife and two daughters. My mama was the oldest. They was little girls when my when my granddaddy left, but. They go. They gonna do. They gonna do the mother with these white people here. Yes. Mm. Mm. They yes. All we gotta do is just stay out the way. Right. And and let right. me go back to right. the right. Congress too. What you was asking about seventeen seventy four is when they, uh, between seventy um seventeen seventy four and seventeen seventy nine is during those five years is when they attempted to strip us of our nationality, and this is when um a lot of that. Um, you know, a lot of the so-called history things had to um, had to do and make change. And what happened is that, yeah, there was amalgamated moors, there was British um, dissidents, um, dissidents in which that uh, was working together in conjunction in order to overthrow um, the Moorish lineage over there um, that was corrupted, however, under King George and Queen Sophia from Charlotte. Um, you know, King George the Third. They 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 actually were tyrants. And so the Moors here attempted to help the British, um, the British um, those who came from Britain, in order to um, you know, help give them some type of um, clarity and to give them some type of independence. You know what I'm saying? And so we actually helped write the Declaration of Independence for them. And right. so there's also the Constitution for them. Right. Tommy, um, in the stories of Thomas Jefferson and in the stories of Benjamin Franklin, they would tell you that they went to go sit amongst the Iroquois Confederation. The Iroquois was part of um, the Confederation along with the Algonquins and along with um, the other Moors, in which that um, actually had a, I guess you would say, a peace treaty amongst each other, right? in which that was called the Kanashafwa. In mm-hmm. which that was the document in which that basically dealt with um, the various laws um, of the people. Matter of fact, this document goes back to over 1500, back back beyond the 1500s. So before the Europeans even came um, on the master scale, we already had these particular treaties um, set up amongst ourselves. And he took that document of the three legislative branches and designed it, you know, um, um, you know, 
uh, we, we designed it for them actually through the Constitution. Um, actually, there's two declarations. Um, um, there's a brother in which that breaks this information down eloquently um, by the name of Shakima um, Bay, in which that he breaks down that uh, we made, we had a declaration for us, that's what it was called, and then we gave them the unanimous declaration of independence for them. All right? And then we also had the Constitution, in which that was the Constitution for the United States of America, you know, and then they had what is known as the United States Constitution or what became known as the Constitution of the United States. So we helped put these particular documents together from the Articles of Confederation, Articles of Association, um, through the Continental Congress, you know, in which that the seat originally was in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. But then um, we got decimated and we got taken, you know, from inside and we got seized by these particular Britons and their amalgamated um, and our amalgamated children. And they mm-hmm. basically wiped our history away and then did, did reconstructive history in which that they moved the capital from out of Pennsylvania to Washington, D.C., you know, in between Maryland and Virgin, yeah, you know, which is the Virgin Mary, the land of the Virgin Mary. So wow. um, all of this was done purposely and masonically. And so we chose that as we was being decimated, you know, and we was um, having our downfall, that we would teach certain amounts of them in which that um, the keys and the secrets so that as we, upon an awakening, we would be able to take back our throne or our seat at the helm of government in which that that is what is um, taking place right now. This is why all this information is coming out. Yeah. They couldn't have called it ISIS land. Uh Right. Exactly. All right. So um, anything else before we go? We're going to be like 11 minutes past the hour. I didn't even realize it. Going in. Oh, wow. Flying by. Flying by, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate um, everyone checking us out, listening. Um, we're going to try to get Brother Bobby Hemet on here um, within this month. So stay tuned. Wonderful. And, um, you know, I'm trying to get a contract with him um, this week in order to make, uh, make that possible. Hopefully, he can do it. Um, so just keep listening, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep bringing you um, the fire and the um, most intellectual and the most powerful shows that we possibly can. All right. Um, before we go, make sure that all of y'all go to www.drlimelbay.com. That's D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y. www.drlimelbay.com. Go to that website. Check us out. And for those in which that need healing, definitely go and check out the herbal section because that is critical. Yes, right? sir. Um, you break down the different plants, how they look, so you can actually be able to identify them in your own garden, as well as also um, telling you what each one does. Um, no other website does that to that extent, so we definitely want you all to check that out. Um, as well as also hydrogen peroxide, which that um, there's a video there called a one minute cure, in which that actually if there's any ailments from um, asthma, bronchitis, diabetes, high blood pressure. Um, herpes, HIV, et cetera, even to AIDS, um, it can help cure all of those particular ailments, even though there ain't no such thing as AIDS per se. It's nothing more than like 23 different ailments um, all combined. If you have at least six of them, then you supposedly you got AIDS. Um, all of that can be knocked out with this one-minute cure called hydrogen peroxide, 8% to 35% on full, um, full grade. And we definitely recommend that you will get some. Um, if you suffer from any problems, as we have stated, um, so come on, um, check us out, and um, support on real information, real knowledge. All yes, right. sir. Any closing remarks, Brother Mike, um, Brother L? Uh, yes, sir. Brother, I'm on that hydrogen peroxide as as we speak. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, I used to cough. I guess you know I'm coughing a lot on even on the blog talk show. Uh, uh-huh. But it has uh, reduced the cough tremendously. And whatever what that cough was about, all uh, the hydrogen peroxide definitely taking care of it. It's addressing it. And okay. uh, 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 I've been taking it like three times a day. Uh, I like a half of a half of a teaspoon of it. That's about three drops, right? 
Oh man, that's 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 a little bit more, but that's perfect too, bro. That's okay, fine. So you I'm... can actually take up to twenty five drops. So yeah, half of a teaspoon. Yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Okay, so I need to reduce it a little more. No, you don't have to. You can keep taking it like that. That's good. Okay, a large glass of water, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it has. It definitely has. Uh, I believe it's uh, working on for us my uh, uh, prostate as well because I don't uh, go to the restroom as often as I used to. Right, it is. You know, it used to be when I stand, as soon as I stand up, I have to go to the restroom. So it, right. I don't do that no more. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely a cure. And uh, I guess I'll probably stop fooling with them doctors uh, 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 so much. Right. Because they're, oh, yeah. they're not doing them for me. And you be but, your own doctor. You know, right. One right. thing they can do is diagnose, Doc. Uh, you know, other than that, you know, or set a bone or something like that. But other than that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even mess with them. I got you. I got you. I got a bunch of medicine I don't even mess with. Right. I don't even fool with that. I mean, this hydrogen peroxide is doing a lot that, that medicine is supposed to do. It's not doing Right. 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 So I stand behind the hydrogen peroxide. Well, there's no doubt. Deborah, Dr. Deborah Blair taught us that um, over 25 years ago about that science. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, no doubt. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I mean, if the people the people want true, real information, you know, I mean, this is where it's at. You know, when it when it comes to that, it's just like, if you want that, that alien dude with the crazy fucking looking hair... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, right. then go there for people like that that want to see shows about UFOs and all that. But even Master Sunyata said, you know, anything mystical is going to appear in the body first. So you got to know your body, you know, before you know, you know, everything out there and what's going on on Mars and, you know, spaceships and little green men coming down. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's all I got to say. No doubt about it. We appreciate each and every one of y'all listeners and definitely for listening to the Dr. Eileen Bay show, listening to Brother Mike Mike, listening to Grand Chic L, and um, what we say is we out. Peace. 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 First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here.
This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 